Shalom, and welcome to our continuing series on the Aleph Tav. We've already investigated some meanings and some uses, and today we're going to see that the word Aleph Tav can also mean a sign. We've already discussed that the principal use for the Aleph Tav as a word is an untranslated word that shows the relationship of the direct object in any sentence. When Aleph Tav means sign, it has a Vav in it when it's in the singular, and we'll talk about the Vav later. But in the plural, it drops the Vav altogether. So, Ot in the plural is Otot. Genesis 1.14 And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. It's important to notice that the light was already available to be seen. When the signs, the uh, moon and the sun and the stars were made, they weren't made to bring the light. The light was already available. So we see that the Father created an external thing that, that we can see. The, the light on the planet does come from the sun, but he might have used anything to carry the light. He created specifically the sun and moon and the stars in their orbits to teach us about our Moedim, about our appointed times, our days, and our years. It's an externalization of a principle that has already existed. And this is very basic to communication. So between understanding the Aleph Tav as showing the direct object and this principle of an external sign, we see that the basic idea behind Ot, behind Aleph Tav, is to communicate something. Genesis 4.15 And Yahweh said unto him, Therefore whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. And Yahweh set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. This was some external, uh, perhaps some disfigurement that happened to Cain. I don't think anybody really can say what was that mark, but it was a visibly recognizable. It was an externalization of something that already had happened uh, inside him as a result of committing the heinous crime of having killed his brother. Genesis 9:12. And God said, this is the token, this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations, spoken by the Father to Noah, that he would never again destroy the entire world by a flood. And after the rain, we can see in, in the rainbow, in the bow in the clouds, that this is an external sign of that covenant that was made forever. Genesis 17:11, And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token, a sign of the covenant betwixt me and you. This was a covenant that had previously been made uh, between Abraham and God, or between God and somebody else, as Abraham slept through the covenant. Um, but he, he carried a physical external mark. And we see that Jewish people today continue to circumcise their children as a mark, as a sign of being in the bloodline uh, of that covenant that was made. Exodus 4, 8. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Speaking to Moses, God had already endued Moses with the power that he needed to go and speak to Pharaoh on behalf of the people, to plead with Pharaoh until such time as Pharaoh let the people go. But he had no credibility with his own people, and so the Father gave him these different signs to perform that the people would believe who Moses was and that God was with him and God was behind what he was doing. Numbers 2.2 two. 
Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign, the sign of their father's house. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. So there was a tribal flag that uh, people could see from far. Everybody knew what tribe they belonged to, but this is an external picture for people to see about what is going on inside the people who belong to that tribe. Exodus 31, 17, speaking of the Sabbath. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made the heaven and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So when we uh, decide that we are in the covenant, that uh, it would please the Father for us to keep his Torah and to keep the Sabbath, that is something that happens to us internally and by faith. As we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, some sign comes to the surface and we keep Sabbath. So when people say to us, oh, there's a big sale at Macy's on Saturday, we say, no, thank you, we're not going to go. Uh, and then people are amazed and shocked and befuddled. And they don't understand why we do these kind of things. This is a sign. It's a sign to the external world, but it's a sign for something that we've already decided on the inside, and it is a communication to other people of our faith, and it shows our relationship uh, to the God that we serve. Deuteronomy 6, 8, And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and that shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. There is uh, nothing magic about laying to fill in, uh, putting on the little boxes that you see. The men will put them on their head. They have Deuteronomy and other scriptures inside, and they put them also on their hand. They wrap the strap. And then they that's how they pray. There is no way that Putting that box on your head or on your hand is going to make you any more special. It's not going to help you pray any better. It is a sign. It is a reminder of whose you are and whose rules and whose uh, judgments and statutes you follow because the Father finds those things pleasing and because you belong to him. And the boxes are, in fact, a rabbinical interpretation of what exactly this verse means, and perhaps they're not the only interpretation. But what we do and what comes out of us and our re is reflected in this oath, in this sign, this keeping the Sabbath or the Moedim or how we eat. These are signs to the rest of the world about our relationship to the Father. Deuteronomy 13.2, speaking of the false prophet. And the sign or wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Moses' warning that false prophets will come, and they will do signs and wonders. So we need not to follow after a sign or a wonder, because it is just a communication, but we do not know where it is coming from. And there is other power besides the power of Yahweh our God, which can accomplish a sign or a wonder. And especially when the false prophet says, let us go after other gods, then we know that he is not following our God. And we need not to pay any attention to that sign or wonder. Jeremiah 10, 2. Thus saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. So we know that the Father set the signs of the heaven in place, and they are to be used to determine the seasons and the moedim, the appointed times and the days and the years. But the heathen have set up a different paradigm, uh, which is commonly called astrology, which purports that those signs, the sun, the moon, and the stars, have some influence and power over you, and that they can uh, 
affect how your life will go, even from day to day. And we are not to think that way. We are not to be afraid of the signs in the heaven. God put them there for the for the right purpose, and we need to be about that right purpose and not be dismayed at them. I want to talk now about the Vav that appears uh, between the Aleph Tav and this word Ot. The Vav, as you know, represents the nail. And it is the nail which holds things together. We use the Vav as the word and. It's attached to the other words, and you can learn about that grammatically uh, in other places. What we see is that that nail, that nail that hung Yeshua on the tree, is what holds all of history and all of spiritual life together. John 20:25. 20, the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Yeshua said, Blessed are those who have not seen, and still they believe. But for Thomas he wanted to see. That nail print is the sign of all eternity. It's what hangs together the Aleph, the beginning, to the top of the end. It is the com entire communication of, of history that a man, a perfect man, a God-man, uh, was murdered, he was killed, and he was raised from the dead. It's all about this vav, the nail, the thing that holds everything together. Matthew twelve thirty nine. But Yeshua answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. We see that Jonah, in, in the account of Jonah, it says that he went down to Sheol. Sheol is the place of for the dead. It's not exactly the grave, it's not where the body is, but Whatever is being held in Sheol, until it is released, it is a place of death. And then we see that the father brings this big fish that has swallowed Jonah to the land. And here comes Jonah out of the belly of the fish, and he is still alive. This is the sign of the resurrection. This is the sign of the, the tree, the nail, which went through the master's hands and upon which he likewise died and was raised from the dead. This is the sign that, that we take as believers. We take by faith in our hearts. And then as we work out our fear and trembling, with fear and trembling, our salvation, we are a sign in the earth of that resurrection life. Also another sign uh, Yeshua said in John 3:14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Another picture of the crucifixion, the death and resurrection of Yeshua. It's most interesting that what happened in the desert to the people, this reference to the serpent on the pole, was that the people were being bitten by snakes. And they were dying. But when they looked on the snake, then they were saved. We have the same option as we live our lives. Either we can go about our business and ignore Yeshua and ignore his salvation um, and die in our sin. Or we can turn to him and be obedient to him, receive the work that he did on the tree, become reconciled to God and become children of God and receive eternal life as a result. We still have some more to investigate in the next lesson about what does Aleph Dav mean. And so uh, we will get on to that next time. In the meantime, Tasemet Ha'inayim Al Hashamayim.
keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.